Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G97 and welcome to the video. In this episode, I'll have another special request, this time using the Mazda RX-7 at Tokyo Expressway. Now this car, you can actually get this at Brand Central, very easy. Um, so I'll show you guys the main guide plus the build for the car itself of what do you need to do in order to build this car at Tokyo Expressway. So, without no further ado, Let's get straight to the video. So, if you guys want to find the car, uh, you can just go to Brand Central, and here it is right here. Now, the price is pretty steep. Quarter of a million credits. Uh, now, there's no need to really worry about this, because you can always win one race at Le Mans and easily grab it. Or, what you can do is actually get this car at one of the uh, mini games um, whenever you get your tickets. Um, it'll, sometimes it does show up, and once you land on it, you'll then get that car for free. But pretty steep price, um, 250,000 credits, uh, the points is about 516, so we'll be able to throw in some parts in the car, about close to 300 horsepower, 245 pounds of torque, and the car is a little bit light, around 2830. So, now here we are at GT Auto for the car maintenance and service. Now you can see we got two options, we can do the wide body and we can do the engine swap. Now, right up here, just ignore that because I went ahead and actually add some parts to the car. Um, so I went a little bit of, a little bit ahead of myself. Now, let's say if you're curious of what the engine is and why it's so expensive. Uh, the engine swap for this car is actually the legendary Mazda 787B. So that's why it's very expensive. Um, if you guys would like to see a part 2 of me with that engine swap, I took a Tokyo Expressway, you're more welcome to do so. But here it is, the wide body. We're actually going to add this to the car. Just buy it for 50,000 credits and you're good to go. Here's the livery for the car I'll be using. It's what I call a drift and race livery. The keywords is going to be Chrome, Drift, and of course the channel's name. Now, if you do not want the livery, um, I'll show you the parts for this car. Just in case you want the parts and not the livery. So, for the rims, it's going to be Yokohama Wheel KM677. Make sure the offset and rim width is set to wide to make sure the rim is 17 inches. A custom parts, the front is going to be type A, the side is going to be type B, the rear is type B as well. And last but not least, the wing is going to be standard, and you can see we have road cage type C on the back glass. And that is going to be it uh, for the car customization parts. Moving on to the setups of the car. Uh, Sport Hard is going to be our tire choice compound for this race. Um, we're going to skip suspension, keep it as is, set to normal. Uh, we're then going to move down to... Uh, our differential which is going to be fully customized um, you see we got set to 5 for the accelerate for torque 15 for acceleration and 20 for braking for your downforce make sure the front is set to 77 the rear set to 100 also make sure you have the ECU equipped set at 100 keep it maxed out uh, the next thing you do need is the fully customized racing transmission set that at 320 as we move to the far right uh, you'll do need anti lag system set it to strong, racing intercooler, racing ill filter, um, and basically after that the steering angle adapter and what you see on the screen that's equipped on the car is what you'll need for the car itself. So as we get started with this race, the car is kind of has a little bit of a slow start, uh, but the car is handling is actually pretty good. Not to mention the fuel itself is really good as well. So as you can see we finally actually do gain speed as we exit the, the tunnel. Gain just a few spots uh, up the field as we're now right at close to top 10, but not quietly there yet. So this actually is a pretty slow start for us uh, in this race as we're at P11. But uh, the car does handle very nicely, like I mentioned before. And of course we have a car that actually does really well on fuel saving as well. Um, so as we get more comfortable with the car, we can actually can throw the car a little bit deeper in the corner. Um, now there is a slight oversteer feel. Uh, for the car, so if you actually do run this race, just make sure and watch out. The car actually might oversteer just a little bit, but um, as you see, we did a little slide there. Um, but it's actually better for it to have a little bit oversteer than understeer uh, handling. But as you can see, we're just mainly carefully making our way through the front, uh, just a little bit slower than usual. But again, with us having that racing transmission, we can shift the gears a lot easier, a lot faster too, uh, than the rest of this competition. So as we're about to approach the top five, we have the Porsche right in front of us, and you can see we have the 
see all the P2, P1's already, the leader's already gone um, at this point. Uh, so we're just going to try and manage as much as we possibly can uh, in these first two laps. See what we can do um, with this track. And you can see uh, we're catching with the other Rio Mera RX-7 and like I said the car is really good. Um, also in the straights too, it might have very poor acceleration but when it comes to overall top speed it actually does pretty good. We're going to give the Rio Mera a nice little shot in the rear bumper. Uh, try to see if we can get the P3 out of this corner. Uh, apparently we will not be able to until right at the end of the straightaway. Uh, we actually do have the speed advantage over the Rio Mera RX-7 version. As you can see we're just barely pulling right in front of it. So as we get done with our first lap, P3, which is too bad at all. Uh, we got the older Super Brian in front of us and the Honda NSX. It's going to be a 224.1. So kind of rather slow uh, for our first lap, but we're going to get that nice slipstream from the Supra and pass it on the inside. And just like that, we'll move to P2. Let's fast forward now to what will be lap 4. Yeah, it took us that long. Um, this is going to be our shot to take the lead in this race and you can see the car is just really handling very smoothly uh, looks like our lap times is right at 210 range uh, so kind of a little bit on the slower end uh, for this car um, overall but as you can see we make a lot of spots or a lot of time on the leader through these very technical turns we're going to get ourselves a good launch out of this corner right here as we just barely just tap the wall and then we're, we're going to outbreak it try to take the lead we do make slight contact but we did save the car uh, being able to recover and just like that we're going to take the lead right at lap 4. So we're going fast forward now a little bit down the hill. Um, this was a very interesting strategy I thought. I was thinking to myself, what if I am able to actually save enough fuel to make it to the end of the race without pitting? So right as we are about to end lap 4, I actually did begin to save some fuel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my fuel map number from one and we're going to move it up to four and we're going to try to do our best to see what we can do um, saving fuel wise now there's a lot of ways you can do you can do save fuel of course what we're doing is the main best thing to do is adjust your fuel map setting but there's little tricks here and there you can do on the track that you can actually help you save some more fuel uh, so for instance uh, you can actually let off the gas early to the corner can early shift as well um, but you can see we're not really changing our rhythm of how we race the tracks except right there we actually did race in third rather than second just for a split second but um, you can do just little things like that being able to uh, race a gear higher than what the game recommends you racing uh, that will let you save some uh, fuel too and you can see right as we fast forward to the last lap we actually were able to do it uh, we actually do have enough fuel that we're actually going to fuel map one so it was quite a very interesting strategy that pretty much paid off just by doing that, uh, not being able to go to pit road and just being able to save that fuel, which was really crucial. And you can see we just mainly did a lot of 211s and 212s here and there. We hit a 213 on lap 6, a rather slow lap um, around the track. But hey, we were able to really find a way to, for it to happen. Um, and you can see on the last lap we can actually push as hard as we possibly can just like we did earlier in the race um, Back up from map one and the car just felt really good the whole entire race. It's just really been in the good rhythm um, For the whole track and being able to really execute some of those corners as well uh, That helps a lot so you can see the car actually does feel pretty nice around these corners as well with a little slide left to right and that very tricky use of cane and just letting the car just literally rolled naturally through those corners as well um, I'm pretty sure through this sector I think we hit purple but you can just see how fast we can actually travel through these corners um, it just seems like the car actually did have some problems with that double right hand turn uh, as well but other than that the car just was really good on handling really good on acceleration as well and really amazingly good on fuel saving, especially if you hit uh, to fuel map 4. It was really good as well. So as we about to approach the last turn for the last time as we're about to catch the Jaguar back marker. Um, the overall I think it was pretty 
a success. Uh, the run itself may not be as fast as some of the other cars I've done in the past, but uh, you can actually do this race without pinning, so that actually is a pretty cool feat. Um, just in case if you want to try to do a race where you don't really have to pit, or just want a car that really handles very smoothly, uh, then there you go. So as we cross the line, we actually did lose all our fuel. It's about the coast. It's going to be a 2632, which isn't too shabby. It's actually a pretty decent time overall. Um, so we didn't get to clear the fastest lap. We did a 210, while the Honda did a 209.045. But despite that, the car was, was handled very well the whole entire race. And you know, with that car being able to be a good car to use for saving fuel, uh, that's the ball. So. Really enjoyed the run build. Also enjoyed the recommendation. So thank you for you guys for telling me to use this car. Um, I don't think I actually used this. Uh, if I have, it's been a long time ago. Unfortunately, since we gave that little bump to the rear mirror, we lose our clean response. But other than that, that's it. So hopefully you guys were able to learn a lot in this particular car at Tokyo Expressway. If you guys want to try this out, you can. Um, this really felt good to drive that car. The handling itself was really good. Fuel mileage itself was really excellent good as well. So if you go try it, you can. Hopefully it'll help you out at Tokyo, Tokyo Expressway. At least get you the W, hopefully. And if you guys want to check out my last video, I did using the triple threat of the Super GT cars. Uh, you can click on the field once you have purchased there. Um, amazingly, three Super GTs actually can work at Tokyo Expressway. So check that video out if you want to. Other than that, if you guys like to support the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well, which would be a big help. Other than that, hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night, wherever you might be, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.